everybody, this is Tim Hinton from the Marching Roundtable and Marching Arts Education here with John. Hey, how you doing? I'm from Twin Dev Comics. Hey, John Bogenshoot, it's great to see you. And so we've been having a lot of these fun discussions doing these. Tonight, we're going to talk about our favorite artists. And the way we that we decided to find that is it's what artists do you have like everything they've released? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I, when I made my list, I realized that there are four artists where I know I have everything. And you said, how many did you come up with? I have six that you have you know you have everything they've put out yeah yeah now I'm, i might not have some live albums and stuff like that but oh, i have right. their studio releases yeah yeah yeah. like i know you can't get too crazy about all that but i mean like yeah. i actively have collected and made sure and i have all those things and it's interesting because on the last i'll start mine my first one i'm going to mention is billy joel just because that billy joel was the first artist in high school that he was the first artist that i was like i want to have everything like I yeah, fell in love yeah. with them. I went to the concert. I bought all the albums. I went back and bought the old albums I didn't have. And then since that time, I'm a Billy Joel fan and I love all of his stuff. And it's been interesting to follow his career and the different things he's done with his music. So I'm going to say Billy Joel is my first one because, I mean, I remember I, I was in high school when um, the whole scenes from an Italian restaurant, the Stranger album came out. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and then I remember going to see him in concert when 52nd Street the album came out. And I'll never forget that concert. Like it's, I have moments from that concert embedded in my brain after all these years. That's back in high school. That was a long time nice. ago. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I would. I, it, he's an artist I would have liked to have seen live. And I've only been to one rock concert. And I know his voice isn't what it is now. So. Yeah, but he's still great. He's still no, great. Right. Yeah. All the time I'm playing is super fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so he, he's, I love Billy. So I've had Billy Joel's I'm the first one I'll mention. He was like okay. my fourth okay. one. I, I all right. Thinking. So I'll clump my four or five or five, yeah, four, five, and six together. Uh, Foo Fighters, I told the story on the last podcast, Tony Rother turned me on to him. And since then, I've got, gone back and like downloaded all of his, all of his albums off of iTunes. Uh, the Beatles, those were ones I actually had the CDs of. Uh, just really like them. And I actually like their earlier stuff a lot. Like, I just really like mm -hmm. that type of rock music. Like, and there's then, something real clean then, about it. There's something really clean about the way that it sounded in the song. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then Guster is uh, the fourth one where I have all their albums. And that's like, it's one of the bands that I'm like, like, why do I like them? But I just do. It's like nothing that I really like otherwise. But I just really get into them. They've got catchy songs. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, in my number three, we talked about on the last conversation we have too which is Madonna and I just okay. I, I love Madonna I've followed her from the very beginning and I just I've kept up with her all this time and um you know sometimes their albums aren't as as successful or I don't love every song of them as much as others yeah My favorite Madonna album is True Blue um which yeah. is the one that has Papa Don't Preach on it which I say was like <laughs> <laughs> anyway but the there's great so many good songs on that Album. A lot of good songs. A lot of good songs. I almost said okay. tape because that's what I had as Madonna. I had tapes all so the way up to Just Find My Love. And then after that, like wh what albums does she have after? Well, like Ray of Light, if you remember, that was a huge hit for her. I don't. And it was it was really different. She had a new producer and it just really sounded really different. You don't, you, okay. just didn't, you weren't paying attention after that. No, I yeah. like, I, I still liked her. I just never paid. I truly. How about Vogue? Wait, wait, which album was that on? Because I remember actually, that one. I remember released, that one. They actually released it on the Dick Tracy soundtrack because it was like. Oh, yeah, album. I had that tape too. <laughs> I went back and listened to the Dick Tracy soundtrack, the Danny Elfman uh, orchestral part. It's basically Batman 2. Is it is that soundtrack? There's even part where I turned one of the co my coworker and I was like, "That was straight from Batman." How's he allowed to do that? Yeah, <laughs> and he's one of those people that has a sound and a and he, it it can it can sound real samey, but it but when you're watching it in the film, it always works. So yeah. I can't. Oh, yeah. Can I? Who am yeah, I? That's what matters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's your number three? Um, my number three is Queen, and this was my favorite band for so long. And and I remember like in high school, 
my dad would mow lawns for like these old people and I would go along and mow lawns. And I remember getting money and being excited to go to the record store and buy the new CD when they had that plastic stuff on it. So you get home, you'd be like getting the scissors and like cutting it just to try and listen to the next Queen impossible album. Yeah. Impossible to get into. Yeah. No. Yeah. But yeah, Queen, like every, every, I had every CD of theirs. Awesome. Okay. Um, the other one I'm going to mention is Sting and the Police. I sort of put those together. Yeah. Um, I mentioned on the last conversation about favorite songs, how much I love Sting. And um, I fell in love with the Police thanks to some students of mine and that, was, that were in band. The first time I listened to it, like I couldn't hear it. And then like my ears grew into it. And then oh, I became okay. a, huge, a huge Police fan and then followed Sting all the way through his career. And I mentioned this before, but I have a visual aid. This is what the CD, it's a double CD. See, it's big, thick, one of those old, I have it back <laughs> in the CDs. The double CD, you remember that, everybody? Of course, now you can download it, but it's a live, when he put the first band together of all those jazz all stars like Ohar McKean, Omar Hakim and, um, you know, Branford Marsalis, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, this is, I saw this concert three times. I flew to Baltimore. I flew to Baltimore to see this concert. That's crazy. I'd never done that before. And then I saw them in Atlanta and then in Athens, Georgia. But I followed the band around because I loved it. But I, by the end of it, I knew all the licks. And then I was so I thought it was such an amazing concert. And then I was surprised later they released the concert on this two disc set. And it's it's unbelievable. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'll, I'll, you want me to tell you a true confession story? Yeah. You, the first time I've I don't know if I wanted to do this or not, but anyway, I've started now. The first time I put this CD on, it starts with Bring on the Night, which is a great police song that he did differently. And it's been, it's in a medley with when the world is falling down, you know, the best you keep, the best was still around, whatever. Anyway, so the, I put it on and I was so excited to be hearing this music again that I started jumping around and dancing around the living room. And then <laughs> the song is like 10 minutes long and I jumped around frantically. I was so ecstatic. I literally jumped around in my living room the whole time for like 10 minutes. And then finally the song ends and I remember collapsing on the floor. Like ex absolutely exhausted. <laughs> it's, it's like one of those like euphor euphoric musical moments in my life where I was so excited to have a recording of it. I can't believe I just admitted that. Nice. But, I thought you were going to say, like, I was dancing, and then I realized it was 10 minutes long. So, like, after two minutes, you're like, no. <laughs> no, that was the thing. I guess I was in Boston shape. I don't know. But I literally just couldn't stop. I could not stop my body, and I jumped around. And no, there's no part of the story where I fly through a window or the police show up or anything. But it was still, I'll never forget. Put, you just, do, just do me a favor. If you like staying. Just I will listen. I will listen to that album. It's it's amazing. It's so it's so fantastic. Okay, that's my crazy crazy Tim story. What's your number two? Uh, my number two is Billy Joel, and he's one that uh, within the last five years is when I was like I I've, I've always had that Grace Hits one and two the double disc set you know and the one CD would always fall out of its clip and you'd open it up and be like please don't scratch God, <laughs> uh, but anyway. The five years ago, like I started listening to him more, and I was like, screw it. And I went in on the complete collection on iTunes and just bought it all. And like, but listen to some of those early albums, like Souvenirs, which I think is his second album. There's some beautiful music in there, it's so yeah. melodic. His voice sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you know the story? Um, oh, what's the song off of? The Grace Hits one two, the live song, the is it she's got a way about her. That one. Do you know the story about that on the first album? How it sounds really weird. It's a little bit faster and it's like higher. Is it, what I can't remember how it ended up like that, but they recorded it too slow or too fast to to where to get yeah. to that point. And he hates that version. Yeah, you know, his first album, which I don't even think you can get anymore. It's not like his. Yeah, they were they, they he went in and they were they screwed up the recording. Yeah, right. So that's why that live version is on the greatest hits one. Yeah, two. He sang it because it's such a great song. Yeah, and I recommend uh, Alec Baldwin does or did a podcast where he interviews different people. Listen to his interview of Billy Joel because wow. Billy Joel talks about like these different moments. Like uh, one of the songs, I can't remember which song, but they couldn't get the feel right, and I think the drummer or producer was like. 
oh, we'll take this bossa nova beat and turn it backwards. And and they're like, perfect. Wow. So it's like, and they're like, we wouldn't have thought about that if he didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't remember the song. It's one of his more popular I songs. Realized, like, I could have put Alan Menken on my list because I have everything that I know of that he's oh, done. Oh, yeah. 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 And he's, I'm such a huge fan. By the way, right over here, picture of me and Alan Menken. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, y'all know he's the guy that wrote Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid and Aladdin and Pokemon. Yeah. All right, yeah. so anyway, that's in a slot. All right, so I veered off. Um, is it time for my number one? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, my number one artist, that, and I don't, I, these aren't necessarily in order, but but anyway, Pat Metheny. Uh, yeah, jazz artist, I, I forgot jazz. about him because I've, I've downloaded all the stuff on Spotify right now, yeah. and I'm going through it. It's so good. I, Pat Metheny is amazing, and like he has done all these variety of things. Like you know, he's all these different. He, he'll get together with two other jazz artists and they'll put something out. And some yeah. of it has gotten gotten really experimental. And I'm like, I don't listen to this very much. But like anything around the first circle time frame. Yeah, actually anything. Like there's so much great music. So I just love there, Pat Metheny, my favorite jazz good. artist. Uh, you know, his guitar sounds, has this gorgeous, gorgeous sound. And I attribute it to the fact that he was a French horn player in high school. And nice. because it has that sort of French horn, dark, rich sound, that's what he sounds like, I think, when he plays. Um, but anyway, I love Pat Metheny, and I have a giant, ridiculous collection of his CDs over here. And I love, I never get sick of them. Yeah, the, I, I, this past month, I've been listening to a lot of them. Just like putting them on in the kitchen. Like, yeah. it's so good. It's great traveling yeah. in the car music. Like go go back to yeah. some of those early early, uh, you know, so falls Wichita Falls. Those like yes! early, early. I was just gonna say that album. The title is so good. There's so many. There's so many. Anyway, tons. The, the, some of those early Matheny albums with the original group are so amazing. And I love Lyle Mays and the sounds he gets on his keyboards and the piano and it's amazing stuff. I met them too. I got to shake their hands. Nice. What's your favorite song by Pat Metheny? Do you have a favorite one? I have two. Oh man, I didn't prepare for that. I mean, I'd have to say first circle is in That's the a good yeah. That's like right up there. But I don't know if I, I I wasn't prepared for that. What are you what are yours? Mine uh my number two is Last Train Home. I just love the the forward momentum of that yeah. song. And then uh my favorite like by a lot too. Like that's just how much I like this song, not because I don't like the other songs, is Minwano six eight. Like ah. it's so smooth, just like it starts out, kicks right in. It's so good. Yeah, that's like right. I could listen to that song every day, and I would never yeah. get sick of it. Yeah, and it's it, that's see that's and that's a great example of just those those sounds coming out of the band are I just my ears are happy, I'm happy, it relaxes me. Yeah, I, yeah. I just, I'm so thankful that Pat Metheny is this genius who has shared so much music with us because I, yeah. love, all, I love all of it. And if you don't I, know Pat Metheny and you're watching this, please do me a favor and go listen to some or buy a couple albums. Yeah, listen to First Circle, of course. Start with that song. I recommend Still Life Talking. Like that whole album, Top to Bomb, is so good. Yeah, that'd be a great place to start anywhere around there. Yeah. Okay, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is Bare Naked Ladies, and this is a band like within the last ten years. Like again, this is just a band where I'm like, I don't know why I like them, but I do, and it's I just really like them. And even like the albums, like the Bare Naked Ladies are me and Bare Naked Ladies are men, which I didn't really care for at first. I really like their good albums, and they've got so many good songs on there on on even those like like Bank Job is. Like I think is like a good indication of, of of how they can construct a song and keep the humor in it because it's a song about them robbing a bank, but as they did it, they went into the bank and there's nuns and so they were like you can't plan for a bank full of nuns, and so then of course they got caught and then it's like about this regret about like and like one of my favorite lyrics is from that song. It's like no matter how what is it. After, I can't remember, but it's something about like looking like an amateur is the biggest crime, and I'm like, I love that. I love that. And, and, and of course, it, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember it exactly. Yeah, 
Now, yeah. make, now make me want to go listen to that song because I don't know a lot of bare naked ladies. Uh, listen to Bank Job. It's it's a song that when people say like I don't really care for them and I play them that song, they're like that's actually a really good song. Cool. Yeah. So, but I, I just like them they, the way they they develop their songs. Like they'll they'll be playing like they'll do like a shorter verse or they'll do the first verse. They'll do like a short snippet of the chorus, give you a taste of it, go into the second verse. And then, like, the chorus is fully developed then. It's like they, they like, tease the song, like, throughout. It, it, I just really like how they do their songs. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, it makes me want to go listen to them. So hopefully people that watch this, thank you for watching. And hopefully you we've given you some ideas of some music you might want to check out. Um, yeah, and I want to hear everybody else's, too, because I, I don't yeah. really venture off to listen to new music a lot. I, like, will pick these artists and just kind of re-listen to them over and over again. So list yours in the comments. Like, I, I want to know what your favorite artists are. Yeah, because I'm always, like you. I'm always looking for new music. And if somebody loves somebody enough to buy everything or have, yeah. have downloaded all their stuff, then I would like to know what that is. So I think it's a great point. And the other thing I think is it's just, you know, we love music. We're musicians. I get excited about music. And there's tons of – I probably could have a lot longer list if I actually had worked on it. i just like, well, I know these four. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, 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 I was thinking about that too when you when – yeah. They're, these are like the obvious four for me. Like I know I've not missed anything by these guys. So yeah. um, this was a really fun discussion. So thanks everybody for watching. Like he said, comment about it. Go to marchingroundtable.com to hit the latest podcast, marchingartseducation.com. See all the content there, live webinars and stuff. And go to Tone Deaf. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> ToneDeafComics.com. See the latest <laughs> comics and sign up for the email so you get them. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, you did you did a comic recently that was so hilarious, and I'm now I'm sitting here. I'm not prepared to tell you. It was like one of those where it's like a chart. Um, oh, the it was it the band room bingo. That was so hilarious. That was Thanks. so hilarious. I had such a good time reading that, and I think I did what you wanted. Like, there's a certain way you know we're going to read it. Yeah. And yeah. and so I just thought that was brilliant. That was great stuff. Is that available Thanks. as a poster now? It is. Yeah, it's on the website. You can download it, or sorry, you can buy it. Have it ready to go. Get your bingo marker out. Yeah, it was it was great. I thought that was really really clever. I just want to mention it. Thanks. It was a redo of an old comic I did, where mm -hmm. I went back and reread it because I was sometimes I go back and put old ones up, repost them, and I was like, this is kind of dumb. So I was like, I I think I need to update this. <laughs> well, I liked it. I thought it was really good. I enjoyed it. Thanks. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks, John. Have a good night. Go to ToneDeafComics.com to see the great work John is doing, including the latest comics and great merchandise like posters for your classroom. You can also sign up to get comics emailed to you as they are released. ToneDeafComics.com Go to MarchingArtsEducation.com where you can get access to the top marching arts professionals through live webinars, videos, and coursework. Imagine where you can take your group with just a few new valuable ideas. You can interact with the experts and ask questions during live webinars, marchingartseducation.com. And go to marchingroundtable.com to see over 750 podcasts. Make yourself more valuable by listening in the car, at the gym, or at your convenience. There's great entertaining conversations on most every topic you might need help with. Get some fresh ideas to help take your group to the next level at marchingroundtable.com.